I heart, get ready. Fantasy football is here. Welcome to the Scout Fantasy Show. ScoutFantasy.com is home to the Fantasy Football World Championships and the best players in the world. Real money winners giving their secrets to help you win. Now exclusively on iHeart. This is the Scout Fantasy Show with your host, the one, the only, Dr. Roto. Roto, get out the insurance cards. Get out the copay. The office, it's open, my friends. All right, let's begin. Let's begin at the beginning. Let's begin at Thursday night. Let's begin at Thursday night football. Jared Carr, what are you doing? What are you doing? We've trusted in you all year long. Here we are. It's the fantasy playoffs. 17 for 41 for 117 yards. Really? Single-handedly, you may have killed the dreams of many fantasy owners. And we have long memories. Oh, yes, we do. We have long memories. We will hate you forever for screwing us. Well, you didn't screw me. I didn't have you, but that's beside the point. I wish I had Latavius Murray. We've been talking about Latavius Murray. He's been getting 20 carries a game consistently. 22 carries, 103 yards, and a touchdown. This is what you've seen with Lat Murray, and he's been pretty good. There were no real surprises there in the receiving which we discussed, Michael Crabtree, this was not going to be a big night for him. I thought it was going to be a bigger night for Cooper, but, but, as the caveat, Cooper's never really performed well against the Chiefs before. So just because Crabtree was getting covered by Marcus Peters doesn't make for Cooper to have a great start. What I did say was, watch the tight ends. Michael Rivera had three and Clive Walford had two, but there are eight targets to the tight ends in this game. And I did mention Seth Roberts as well. I know I did. He had nine targets. But it's got to be better than two for 12 on nine targets. I mean, that's just not acceptable. For Kansas City, it just goes to show you, get the ball in the hands of your best players. Travis Kelsey, five for 101. Look great. Tyreek Hill, six for 66 and a touchdown. And then, of course, the return. Jeremy Macklin, I was worried about Jeremy Macklin, but I was very happy to see him not get the football. Three targets, one for 16. Let me see that the next few weeks. I want Kelsey. I want Hill. That's what I want. That's what I want. Alex Smith, not disgusting, 264 yards and a touchdown. Spencer Ware, 20 for 56, but he didn't really do anything. Where's the touchdown? Wasn't there. Charkandrick West steals the touchdown. You're killing me, Charkandrick. So... Who killed fantasy owners? Derek Carr, Spencer Ware, Amari Cooper, Michael Crabtree. Who helped him? Lat Murray, Travis Kelsey, Tyree Kill. There you go. That's why fantasy football can be very frustrating. Hashtag fantasy frustration. Can be. But we have to grin and bear it. So now Thursday's done. We've got to move on. We've got to move forward, and we will break down this week's game, my friend. So let's get it started. Pittsburgh at Buffalo. First of all, for the Buffalo Bills, I expect Robert Woods to be back. I expect the the, the Bills to have Sammy Watkins and Robert Woods, and we're going to see them as good as they've been, as healthy as they've been offensively. We're going to see LaShawn McCoy playing at a very high level, but we're going to see Mike Gillisley steal goal line back. touches. He may get a touchdown or two, and it's annoying. That said, I like the Bills to play well. I think Pittsburgh is going to struggle a little bit in this game. It's going to be a very close game. Loser goes home. This is like in wrestling. Loser leaves town. This is a loser leave town match, right? One of these two, their dreams are done. One of them will move forward, and one of them will be done. Will it be Big Ben? Will it be Antonio Brown? Will it be Lev Bell? Those are the best players in the field. Will it be Ladarius Green, who is absolutely Ben Roethlisberger's second most important target after Brown? I don't know. I think I like the Bills in this game, but it's going to be close. Denver versus Tennessee. I'm going to give you some names here. They're going to surprise you. Trevor Simeon. Tennessee can be beaten because their secondary is horrible. If Gary Kubiak is willing to throw this football, Denver wins this game. If Gary Kubiak is not willing to throw this football, Tennessee wins this game. This game comes down to Gary Kubiak. Who do I want fantasy-wise? I want Simeon. I want Emmanuel Sanders. I want Demarius Thomas. 
I even like Justin Forsett. Nobody else is going to talk about Justin Forsett. I will. Why? Because I truly believe that Devontae Booker is not what the Broncos are happy with and what they're looking for. And Justin Forsett is very comfortable with Gary Kubiak's offense. He will come right in and he's playable. For Tennessee, Marcus Mariota is going to struggle. Delaney Walker is going to struggle. Rashard Matthews is going to struggle. But you know who not, who's not going to struggle? DeMarco Murray is not struggling. This guy's going off. Denver's run defense is bad. You're going to see a healthy dose of DeMarco Murray and Derrick Henry. Boom, 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 boom. And Denver's not an offense that puts up a ton of points. So this game is going to be close. This game is going to be a field goal game. This game is going to be a McManus suck-up game. And this game is going to be a DeMarco Murray game. Washington at Philadelphia. You know I love the narrative. D. Jacks coming back to Philadelphia. The man wants to get paid in the offseason. He's looking for a contract, and the Eagles are ready to sign him. I think he gets catches a bottom this week for a touchdown and puts his signs on the dotted line, baby. I like Kirk Cousins. I like R. Kelly. I believe I will get 20 carries this week. I like Ryan Matthews as a sneaky start. I do. I like Jordan Matthews as a good play this week. I think this game will be higher scoring than we think. I will roll a little bit with Washington and Philadelphia. Arizona and Miami. Here's a play that nobody's thinking about. How about Jermaine Gresham? Remember what Dennis Pitta did last week? Jermaine Gresham is at least half a Pitta. And of course, we know we love David Johnson. But about Miami, Ajayi, I'm not sure. Landry, I'm not sure. Devontae Parker, I'm not sure. There's a tough defense. Will they put pressure on Tannehill? This is a loser leave town match too. Winner advances on and maybe makes the playoffs. Losers got no chance. Big week for these two teams. It's always amazing how in the NFL it comes down to this. Week 14, tough game. Two teams fighting for a playoff spot end up facing each other. All right. San Diego at Carolina. I like Melvin Gordon. Don't love him. I like him. Like Phillip Rivers. Like Dontrell Inman. Like Antonio Gates. Carolina's very, very bad against the tight end. Like Gates. For Carolina, I only like two players this week. I don't like Kelvin Benjamin, who I think is going to get covered by Casey Hayward. I like Ted Ginn to make a play. He's been Cam Newton's favorite target pretty much all season. And how about, please, please, I will play this guy every week, Greg Olson. It's almost like DFS baseball with Giancarlo Stanton. Some nights when he's like in a cold streak, I just play him because I know he's going to have the two touchdown game. The two, the two, uh, sorry, the two home run game. And when he does, I'm going to win. I feel that way about Greg Olson. He's going to have a big week this week. I just don't want to be the guy who doesn't have Greg Olson when he has the big week. It could be this week. So I want to be part of that. So Ginn and Olson, I'm, I'm on board work for. Cincinnati, Cleveland. If the Cleveland Browns are going to win a game. I say it's going to be this game. I do. I say it's going to be this game. Is it going to be at Buffalo? No. San Diego? Yeah. But I think this is a little bit of a narrative game here too. Where did you Jackson used to coach? Cincinnati. Is there, who is his mentor? Marvin Lewis. Who knows Andy Dalton and what he likes to do and not like to do? Hugh Jackson. If there's ever a game that the Browns have a shot in, it's this one. That said, I like Andy Dalton. I like Jeremy Hill. I like Tyler Eifert. Love those three guys' as plays in seasonal and DFS for sure. Cleveland, I worry about RG3. I always worry about RG3. But will he throw the ball downfield to Corey Coleman and Terrell Pryor? I expect that he will. If he does... Interesting game. If he does, it will be an interesting game. Chicago at Detroit. Can we? Can you believe that the Detroit Lions are in a thick, in the thick of a playoff race? Look at you, Jim Caldwell. You have no idea what you're doing, but you're winning. You, you got. You just shocked me. But Matthew Stafford should have a nice week. Theo Riddick should be okay. But I'm, I'm worried about Marvin Jones as Marvin Jones plays. If he doesn't play, I'm absolutely starting Golden Tate. If he does play, then I don't know who I'm starting because it could be a little bit of everybody. For Chicago, I know Marcus Wilson is back, but I'm not loving him. I like Jordan Howard. I don't love him. 
like him. Not great. I don't really like Chicago this week. I see this as a very ugly game. This is going to be a big time of possession, ugly game. Houston at Indianapolis. Now, Indianapolis looked so good on Monday night. It's going to be very, very tempting to play them. And I'm not telling you not to. Andrew Luck playing at a high level. Hilton. Checking into the Hilton. Moncrief. Gore. Dwayne Allen. But I think this game comes down to one simple thing. The Houston Texans defense putting pressure on Andrew Luck. If Luck can sit back there, he will pick the Texans apart. If he's pressured like he was in the beginning part of the season, I think Houston has a chance because I do think that Lamar Miller will be better this week. Last week it was cold in Green Bay. Not as cold. And I think it was a problem. I think Nell Hopkins is better this week. Fonte Davis is a shell of his former self. I think Fedorowicz is good this week. I think this is a really big game here. Huge, huge implications. So I think these guys are going to come to play. I do like Indianapolis, but I think it's going to be about covering the, the receivers and rushing the passer. Okay. Minnesota at Jacksonville. Oh, man. Gus Bradley, you are so done, dude. You are so done. You'll end up as a defensive coordinator somewhere. You were good at that. But man, I, I don't know if I want to blame you, Gus. But you had a lot of young drafts. You had a lot of injuries. Dante Fowler. You had a lot of guys not do anything. And you have the world's worst quarterback in Blake Bortles. I've said it before. I said it again. He stinks. Stinks. Chris Ivory stinks. TJ Yeldon stinks. I mean, you got receivers, but you're not using them. It's just a mess. You're overpaid for Julius Thomas. This team is wretched. The only thing I like about Jacksonville, the uniforms and the logo. It's a cool logo. Vikings is going to rip them apart this week. Vikings defense is going to smolder Blake Bortles. I like Stephon Diggs a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. I like Kyle Rudolph a little bit. I think Minnesota wins a very, very ugly game. This is going to be an ugly, low-scoring game. You might see a few field goals in it, but I think at the end of the day, one touchdown is going to pull it out. Okay. The Jets against the 49ers. Is there any doubt that the Jets have given up? I think they have. Forget the fact that they're playing Bryce Petty. I just think they've given up. I think they're done. They're done. So them flying across the United States to go to a 4 o'clock game against San Francisco... I don't know about that, guys. I don't know. I really like San Francisco this week. I like Colin Kaepernick this week. I know you all think I'm crazy, but I'm not. Crazy like a fox. And here's why. He's going to be so low-owned. He's going to be owned by like 2 3 4% of people. And I'm going to be one of them. Because I don't think the Jets... I think the Jets have quit. I think the Jets have quit. But nobody wants to start Kaepernick considering how bad he was last week. He was awful. I get it. Recency bias. That guy screwed me. But you know what? I think Kaepernick wants his wants a job in the NFL. And he's going to have to play well. So, yes, I like Kaepernick. And I will start him. I will start Carlos Hyde. I will start Brandon Marshall. After that, I'm not comfortable with any other starts. New Orleans at Tampa Bay. Come on, Bucks. It's a big game for you right here. Four o'clock in Tampa. Under the lights at Raymond James. The big sombrero. Love it. Jameis Winston, year two. Can you lead the team to the playoffs? Mike Evans, can you be the horse that the team needs? Cameron Brake, can you use your intelligence to get open in the red zone? Who's your running back? I have no idea. This, this is like, a, a, like a, 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 a sauce. When you're making an Italian gravy, you're making your sauce on a Sunday, a Sunday sauce. You throw in a little... Uh, I don't know what's in there. I don't know, but it's a little bit of everything. A little Doug Martin, a little Charles Sims, a little Jack Quiz Rogers. I don't know, but it tastes good. Right? At the end of the day, it's going to taste good. It's going to be delicious sauce. But I don't know who the guys are in it. I don't know the ingredients I'm using. Just know it tastes great when Grandma makes it. For New Orleans, I like Willie Sneed. I don't know why, but I think he always plays better on the road. I don't like Brandon Cooks on the road. Mark Ingram is not 100%. I do like Tim Hightower if... Mark Ingram is out, but I think Mark Ingram plays. 
I like Kobe Fleener considering Josh Hill is out. I think he gets targets naturally. All right, Atlanta, Los Angeles. I, I know I'm going to shock you guys here, but Todd Gurleymon. I think Todd Gurley does well this week. I think he gets 100 yards. I think he's a good play on FanDuel. I think he's actually a decent play on DK because the, the Falcons let up a lot of receptions out of the backfield. And this is a winnable game for the Rams. Jeff Fisher, big contract. Win a game at home. You can win this game, Jeff Fisher. You can win this game if you establish Todd Gurley. If you do, you might pull it off. For Atlanta, Julio Jones, not 100%. Mohamed Sanu, most likely out. I like Devonta Freeman. I like Tevin Coleman. I like Taylor Gabriel. I think Taylor Gabriel is a very sneaky start in DFS. I'll be, I'll be interested in that one. Seattle at Green Bay. Start your engines. It's good four, good four o'clock games here. I think this is a very high scoring game. And I think the lack of Earl Thomas is going to be telling. Telling. I really do. I, I'm putting a lot of eggs in this basket. I will probably stack the crap out of this game. I think that Aaron Rodgers throws for three touchdowns. I think Jordy finds the, the end zone. I, I can't tell you, but maybe Cobb finds the end zone. I think Earl Thomas not being there is big. But conversely, I think Seattle will play very well at Green Bay. I think Tyler Lockett is starting to play good football again. He looks healthy to me. Doug Baldwin is always playing well. I think Seattle... Why did Washington beat Green Bay? Because they challenged them deep. They didn't throw short passes. They challenged them deep down the field. I think Seattle will do the same thing. That's the recipe to win. So Lockett, Baldwin, Graham, Rawls, love them. Love them. I like this game. I'm putting. I'm, I'm going to pop a lot of players in this game. Dallas and New York, you know, look. This game comes down to a couple of things. Janoris Jenkins on Des Bryant. Can the Giants stop Ezekiel Elliott without JPP there? How will the Giants be without JPP? That's question number one. Dak is going to do his Dak thing. Zeke Elliott's going to do what Zeke does. Dez is going to be Dez. Dallas is exactly who they are. Time of possession, ground it out, pound it out, play decent enough defense. Can the Giants make big plays? Can Eli Manning find Beckham? If Beckham is covered, can he go to Shepard? I don't really love these guys this week. I don't. I think this is a lower scoring game. Can the Giants defense put pressure on Dak? I don't know. I don't know the answers to that. But I know I don't really want to play too many guys in this game. I want to be very sparing here. I'll play Zeke. I'll play Beckham. And then I'm going to look for other options. And then finally, in what I think is going to be the fireworks game of the week. Baltimore at New England. Giddy up. That's right. Giddy up. I think Tom Brady goes for 350 yards and four touchdowns this week. You cannot run on the Ravens. The Ravens' run defense has been very staunch all year. I think LeGarrette Blunt goes for maybe 30 yards. He might get he might get a rushing touchdown, but he's not going to get the yardage, which means that Brady is going to throw for it. He's going to throw all over the place. I like Deion Lewis. I like Malcolm Mitchell. I like Julian Edelman. I love Julian Edelman. I like Hollywood Hogan. But Baltimore too. I think Baltimore, you know, there's one rule of thumb. If you, you know, what's the high, high play week of the week, of the quarterback of the week? I like Tom Brady. If I like Tom Brady, I may want to hedge my bet and go with Joe Flacco because I don't think this is going to be 41-7. This is two good teams here. So by picking up Flacco would be great. Steve Smith. Dennis Pitta, Dennis Pitta always does something interesting against the, the uh, Patriots. I like that one too. So if you want to find more of my information, and I've got my DFS visionary plays of the week, you go to scoutfantasy.com. You enter the promo code ROTO. That's R-O-T-O. You pay for one month, we'll get you two more for free. You can get access to my DFS plays. Who do I like? Who am I going to start? Also, you get access to our scout scores. Who does Sean Childs like? Who does the scout fantasy team like? You get access to Adam Ronis, one of the top players in all of fantasy sports. Right? You get Ronis, Childs, Roto, Mark Deming, Joe Jefferson, 
High stakes players who've won at every level. And that's why you join Scout Fantasy. And you do it by entering promo code ROTO. Pay for one month. You get two more for free. All right, guys. We're going to be on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio a ton this weekend. That's Sirius 210 XM 87. Tonight from 10 to 12 p.m. Saturday, 7 to 10 a.m. Sunday, 7 to 9 a.m. And then again, 7 to 9 p.m. I'm never even going to see Mrs. Roto this week. I'm going to forget what she looks like. I'm going to have to bring a picture while I, while, I, while I do my shows. But it's all for football and it's all for fantasy. And we love it. All right, guys. Time to put away the insurance cards. Put away the copay. The office is closed, my friends. I wish you luck in the first week of the playoffs. Come to Scout Fantasy. Go to the premium forums. We will give you the advice you need to win your leagues. Be well and take care. Thanks for listening to the Scout Fantasy Show. There's never been a better time to join the Scout Army. Visit ScoutFantasy.com. Use the promo ROTO for two months free. And don't forget, fantasy players, please thumbs up the podcast on the iHeart app. See you next time. Go Scouts!